My name is Stacy Kim. I'm on the research faculty at Moss Landing Marine Labs in Central California. Right now we are at McMurdo Station in Antarctica and I do research down here on benthic ecology which is studying how the animals that live on and in the seafloor interact with each other. So I'm interested in the communities. The water here is minus 1.8 degrees C, or about 29 degrees Fahrenheit, so it's pretty darn cold. It's below freezing. And the parts of your skin that are exposed when you jump in as a diver are your lips and a little bit of skin on your face. And when you first jump in, the stinging, the sense of needles, ice needles, ice crystals um, coming into your face is, is really shocking and um, it takes a few seconds for your lips to actually go numb so that you no longer feel that, that pain. When you first jump in the water, you're going down through a tube of ice and um, it's the hole that's been drilled by the drill rig or melted by the hot sea rig and so you see right in front of you a wall of ice and you can see all the crystals and all the layers that are in it. And this is also the time when you're checking your gauges and making sure that everything's good and you're feeling the, the pain in your, in your lips. But then you come out below the ice and your vista just opens out and we have such incredible visibility down here, 300 meters is not too uncommon. So you get a sense of flying in a way that you don't get it anywhere else when you're diving because you can actually see hills and valleys and mountains and cliffs in the underwater landscape which you can't see anywhere else that I've been diving. It's a really incredible experience. This is the latest tool in an arsenal of tools that we use to do marine science study. This was built by the team of engineers that's here with me in the room. Um, it's called SKINNY, which stands for Submersible Capable of Under Ice Navigation and Imaging. It's a ROV, a remotely operated vehicle, so it has a pilot on the surface with a joystick who is sending commands down, so it drives around, so it's kind of like a video game, only um, it's real world. And Skinny has an eye, it has a really excellent camera that's recording and an, a really good navigational system so that we know exactly where we are. So between those two things, the really good imagery and the really good navigation, we are able to create visual maps of the seafloor and that's our science goal for this year, is to get into new areas that are deeper than where divers can go and look at these new communities and try to map out where the organisms are distributed and how that relates to the topography or the bathymetry of the seafloor and where the current patterns are moving and how the food is distributed. I came to the Antarctic the first time in 1988 when I was a graduate student at Moss Landing Marine Labs and it was actually quite a surprise. Usually when you come to the Antarctic there's a great deal of preparation and lead time and you know that you're going and what happened was my major advisor John Oliver um, had worked in the Antarctic a great deal with Paul Dayton who was one of the original marine ecologists down here and so uh, Dr. Dayton is my scientific grandfather and I'm really um, honored by that and John Oliver is my scientific father. Greenpeace had come down here because um, they had realized that there was a great deal of dumping that was going on from McMurdo Station. And in 88, we were not very good about our waste disposal practices anywhere. We were still improving and we were definitely not good when we were far away from people. So McMurdo had an open dump site and um, various other disposal practices which were not very state of the art. They stopped the dumping in 1988, immediately after we did our study, and that was a fantastic thing, and they've spent 20 years working on cleaning that up. So the terrestrial side is all cleaned up. There is nothing remaining of the old dump site, which is fantastic. It's a little harder to clean up the, the marine portion of it. We just don't have the technology to clean that area up without spreading the contamination over a larger area. So our best efforts right now are to leave it alone, and keep an eye on it and as technology improves maybe we'll find a way to remediate that area. As an ecologist I really like working here because it's a fairly simple ecosystem and it's also the most undisturbed ecosystem on our planet that remains and so for trying to understand ecology before human impacts or without human impacts this is a really good place to do that kind of work and I think that's important because then we can understand what we humans are doing and where that's relevant and where we can work to minimize our impacts to keep the ecology of the planet working in harmony and, and keep ourselves as well as the rest of the planet happily moving along and, and, uh, and working together.